Hello again, and welcome to the Play Space Live. I'm Keith Avalone from Play Games. Sam is at the controls. Tonight we're going to give you a Play.con, or PlayNotCon, I should say, update, and play some Fury Hardball. Fury Hardball, a big part of our second day, the platinum day of the PlayNotCon. But let's talk about the update first. I just finished uploading stuff to the website in anticipation of Monday's newsletter. Uh, so you can, uh, if you click on the link that talks about PlayNotCon, uh, it'll give you all the scoop. Uh, a lot of that information was included in the uh, email that I sent out to people that had already signed up for the Platinum Package. Uh, so this will all be news for the people that haven't and uh, kind of a rerun for those who have. But nonetheless, the information is there on the website, so check it out when you get a chance. It has the uh, schedule for both days and kind of a, a basic rundown of how we're going to do this. We are closing in on 100 people signed up for the Saturday event. Uh, we have 76 people signed up for the Sunday event. Uh, and we'll close off the registration for the uh, Platinum Day on Monday. Uh, we had to bump it up a couple days so we could meet our production deadlines. Everybody's going to be taking a break for the 4th of July holiday weekend, so we wanted to make sure that we got the stuff back in time to mail it back out. Our plan is to get everything back by around the 21st of July, have everything shipped back out by the 24th of July, so it'll arrive at your house uh, in plenty of time for the uh Get together, which will be on August 8th and 9th. So, uh, you can get the list of the swag bag goodies on the uh, website. It has a bunch of Fury Hardball items and a cool set of Ultimate College Football teams for second season. In that email that I sent out to the Platinum people, uh, I mentioned that tonight was the night I was going to announce the 16 teams in our Ultimate College Football Bowl Game Package. 16 undefeated national champion teams, cumulative record of 200 no, 200 wins, zero defeats. But that's going to be short-lived uh, after our event on Sunday. We're going to have a, a series of bowl games matching these teams up in, in uh, whatever matchups people want to do. Um, and we'll have some winners and some losers. So some of those teams are going to taste defeat for the first time. Uh, I don't have the college football teams created yet. I have the ratings created. I've got it all, uh, you know, sketched out. But I have not actually sat down with the InDesign and, and laid out the card designs as of yet. But I can tell you which teams are going to be included. And they are as follows. Uh, we'll go in descending order, starting with the 2010 Auburn uh uh, team with Cam Newton, the Heisman Trophy winner, 2010 Auburn, and it goes 29 or 2009 Alabama. Mark Ingram with the Heisman Trophy, uh, Julio Jones, Dante Hightower, Nick Saban, uh, generating the national championship for the Crimson Tide. Uh, Texas, 2005 with Vince Young, uh, 652 points. I was looking at their, their scoring for that year. And man, they ran up the score against everybody, didn't they? NCAA record of 652 points that year. Uh, Frank Gore with 2001 Miami, uh, the first year for Larry Coker. Uh, Oklahoma, 2000. Uh, we'll, just go, we'll just go down the list. 1999 Florida State, 1998 Tennessee, 1997 Michigan, 1995 Nebraska, 1991 Washington, 1988 Notre Dame, 1986 Penn State, 1984 Brigham Young, 1981 Clemson, and 1980 Georgia. So no duplicate schools. Of course, many of those schools had duplicate undefeated national championship seasons in that time span. But we want to make sure that we had 16 different schools. So there you have it. Ranging from 1980 to 2010, uh, 16 undefeated national champions. So you'll get, a, you'll get a team card for each of those. It'll be in, in the school colors. And the way we're going to work this is uh, we're going to have 24 different bowl game rooms set up on our Discord server. And each room will be named for a play, uh, a play games sponsor. Dot Cola, uh, you know, Amicable Insurance will have a bowl game. They'll, each of those sponsors will sponsor a bowl game in that room. And we'll also have a name for each bowl. I've, I've, we've only come up, up uh, with a couple of the names. Uh, I think it's going to be the uh, Amicable Insurance Presents the Friendship Bowl. Uh, I think we're going to have a Banana Bowl. You know, we'll, we'll have names for each of these bowl games and a sponsor for each. But what we won't have is the teams. That'll be up to you. You'll be able to pick whichever team you want. You'll be matched up against another play gamer, uh, and then each of you will choose one of these 16 teams, and you'll have your own, your own uh, legendary epic uh, college football bowl game, Clash of the Undefeateds, and uh, then at the end of it, of course, we'll have some duplicates because uh, we've got 16 teams and, uh, you know, probably, mm, I'm going to guess, between 40 and 50 people playing. So we'll have, we'll have duplicate, you know, matchups. And at the end of the afternoon, we'll add up all the wins and we'll declare our own, uh, you know, national champion for all time 
uh, based on which team won the most bowl games. So that'll be a lot of fun, I think. Uh, that's coming up on Sunday. The afternoon session uh, will be college football. Um, so let's talk about Fury Hardball. That's going to be the morning session. I, I believe we have, you know, to be honest with you, we haven't really settled on whether we're going to do baseball in the morning, or, you know, hardball in the morning or football in the afternoon. But right now I'm thinking we'll start with hardball uh, and go with go with uh, football in the afternoon. We might reverse that. In fact, I think I might have it reversed on the, on the website. Bottom line is we really haven't decided 100% yet. Uh, but Fury Hardball will be uh, the second part of our big platinum day. And uh, the swag bag is... Uh, is heavy on the hardball stuff because uh, you're going to get to use this stuff, you know, for the for the tournament and and, and beyond. I'm sure. Let's go ahead and show you the uh, the materials here. The box. So you're going to get the boxed game. You're going to get uh, the set of uh, 18 expansion teams. Um, you will get the play mat. And there was, was one other thing too, isn't there? And, Fury dice. Well, the Fury dice in there. You'll you'll see that in a second. Um, okay, so so you get all those items for Fury Hardball, and um, let's go ahead and show you the game. Unbox the game for you. Here's the here's the game box. So you can see the uh, you know it's your standard uh, play now box, uh, and, it, and we'll take the sleeve off and show you what's inside. Now I will I'll give you a heads up. We don't have the instructions in here. We're still formatting the instructions from uh, a single page to a half page booklets, but we can show you the rest of the components. So we'll move this out of the way, and here we go. So this is how the uh, the uh, box game will, will work. Um, we have our, our, our dice and stuff. Let me show, the, show you the, the components. This is our automated uh, base running and base stealing quick reference card, which you can use. You can play this game totally automated, and it plays, like, super fast. Or you can introduce stages of, of uh, you know, involvement. Where maybe you're calling the uh, the pitches and, and batting stances for one of the teams and rolling for the other, or you can play it head to head where you are completely you know trying to outguess the other guy, and that's super fun too. And all those ways, they're all it's all a very fast playing game, and it's, and it's fun in any of those modes. But if you're playing solitaire, it's particularly fun to just uh, use the automated uh, pitching and batting mode, and the base running and stealing helps uh, automate that part of the game as well. And here are the. Uh, batter and fielder cards so so you'll set one team up like this uh, and then you'll set the other team let me clear some table space here it's not really a very very large footprint it's, it doesn't take up that much space on your on your tabletop so there's your uh, your batter and your center now if, if you got the christmas version you can see that we've uh, changed the theme here uh, the christmas version was kind of an industrial in a look kind of a concrete and steel look we decided to go with more of a traditional baseball look for this so you can see it's got grass, it's got wood, and there is some, you know, baseball, some metal type uh, uh, accoutrements to it as well. So we're playing where you've, I've got the swing board on top of the Furious Action Board. You can set it up if you want. You know, you can do this any way you want. You can set it up this way. You could put these over here, you know, however you want to do it. This is the way I play it, though, is it takes up a little bit less space that way. So when I need the Furious Action Board, I just flip it over. Uh, and then you, you've got your base teams. You'll have the six base teams, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Boston and New York, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, and uh, Karachi and Sydney in the international sphere. So let me show you the uh, the dice. Here's our uh, little bag of goodies here. And you'll get these... Uh, These pawns actually will come with the uh, the are, are are to be used in the in the uh, play mat. There's there's no space really here for for them on the on these game boards. We don't have a scoreboard. You you'll see the play mat here shortly. So I'm just going to set these aside. And here are the uh, the dice. You got the D10, which you know you'll use for most of your action. We're going to include a D6, uh, two D6s, a, a blue one and a white one, uh, because you can use the D6 for the fury symbols. Um, and also, you, you roll the d6s for the automated batting and pitching. Now, this is the Fury die, which, as you can see, has the uh, different symbols. It's got two squares and three circles and a triangle. So, uh, that will you, you, you can play the game. If you're playing head to head, you'll only need these dice. If you're playing the game solitaire and you're automating uh, the batting and or pitching, you'll, you'll use all four of these dice and roll them together. And these are your, your base running tokens. You've got a, a marker for the current batter. Uh, you got a marker for if the pitcher's pitching with a look. Then you get, you got the marker which indicates whether the runner is on the bonus base or the safe base. Uh, and then you know you can slide them along as you're 
you know, as you're you're going going along with your uh, your game. Um, let me go ahead and uh, get the mat out. I'm going to pick all this up and show you how this translates to the mat. So this, I mean, this is a, a completely self-contained game here. You don't you don't have to have the mat, but I, as I, as I, I think you'll see, the mat is 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 cool. And uh, there's you know there's something about rolling the dice on that that uh, mouse pad surface. It's softer. It seems to roll better. I don't know. Maybe just all in my head. I don't know. But uh, now the 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 mat that we have is is not a real mat. It's a, it's a mock-up. Uh, so it's it's not made of that material. It's made of a hard. It's actually just a printed on a like a fabric type uh, surface and put on a foam board, which is why I can pick it up and move it on here. Um, but here is the mat, or what the mat will look like. It'll be this size. It'll be this color. But it'll be obviously you'll be able to roll it up. It's slightly, yes, yeah, a slightly, slightly different color. I believe the green is a little bit greener. All right, so and here's where the here's where the tokens come into play. We've got a a, a board here for to mark the outs, and then you mark the uh, you put these tokens for the home and the way team. So that's how this will work. Yeah, and then you'll you'll use the two boards. I don't know why I put those away. What was I thinking? You'll use the uh, you'll use the uh, swing board and the uh, furious action board. They will set. They'll set right here in the center. And as you can see, it, it uh, you know kind of blends in really nicely. I don't know how many times I've, how, how many times I've picked this up and forgotten. Oh wait, those aren't attached. It's like oh, the boards go flying. All right, so let's play a quick game here. I'll show you how the game works. If you're not familiar with the game, it's very fast playing. We'll play. Uh, I got a couple of the two teams, a couple of the base teams separated here. Um, we'll play San Francisco and Los Angeles. And uh, let's see, I believe Bourget. I tried to set these guys up beforehand, but I, I may have, uh, oops, these guys are fielders. Sorry, I got them upside down. So, so we're going to have Bourget be our slinger. We'll have Khatib and Jax be in the outfield. Fielders one and three. And the batters will be, uh, let's see, Lopez. No, I don't think we want Lopez. I think these, these guys are the, uh, let's see, it's Nakamishi. Can Cannon and uh, I don't th that's right. I've got I've got these guys are going to be the reserves. Uh, that's right. These guys are not that great at not that great at batting. They've got really strong fielding. All right. So uh, yeah, Lopez, Budnick, Xander, Morabito will be their batting order. These two guys uh, will be their reserves because, as you know, if you played the game before, you know that uh, you may have to dip into your reserves very quickly. So we got a, a two extra batters. Both Can Cannon and Nakamichi can bat. Uh, can Cannon can sling Nakamichi can field, so they are covered in case of uh, injury or a uh, uh, ejection. We'll put them under Bourget. Now I got to set up Los Angeles, which I did not have time to do here. So here's the, just this is actually give, give, be a good way for me to explain how I go through this. The, the way I do it first is there are th each team has uh, six guys that can or three guys that can sling, six guys that can field. Nine guys that can bat. Everybody can bat. So the, so the way I do it is I always start by looking at who's going to be my pitcher, who's going to sling. So I got because it's one of three. So I'll look at those guys and I'll think, yeah, let's see. I think I'll go with uh, Bargava as the as the slinger. All right. So now these guys can both sling and bat. So I'll put them with the batters. Now I'm going to look at the fielders. Who can field? I'm going to look at these guys and I'm thinking, okay, who, who who do I want in the field? Uh, it looks like our Arakelian, he's, he's got a stinger maybe, so I'll put him in, in two. And, uh, and we'll put Pouncey. Now, sometimes these guys are your best batters too, though, so that, that doesn't always work. You might want to, you know, look at your batting order and then kind of revisit whether you want to have those guys in the field or not. But for an exhibition game, I'm just going to leave it as it is. All right, now I've got these guys left to bat. I'm going I'm to flip, flip them all to the batting side, and I'll decide who what my order is going to be. All right, uh, Dinger. Who's who's the best? This look, looks like Buzek is a... Pretty much going to get on the base most of the time. He's not the greatest power hitter, but but he'll he'll do. Uh, we don't want Funkhauser batting. He's gonna he's a can have a lot of zingers. Estupian can go in maybe, and we'll go with uh, Casaza. He's got a little bit of power, and then Siegel. All right, so there we go. And these will be the, so they've got a sling a guy that can sling, and a guy they can field. Same same arrangement. So they are set for any possible ejection. All right, now let's go ahead and get started. So um, I'm not going to 
excuse me, I'm not going to go into a, a huge explanation of how the game works. Uh, it's a very, a very distilled uh, version of hardball, kind of a uh, kind of a hybrid of wiffle ball, cr- uh, cricket, and baseball. Uh, each team bats once. You get nine outs. Try to score as many runs as you can. The visiting team goes first. Then the home team goes, and they get nine outs to score. You know, to, to try to take the lead. They, if they take the lead after their uh, their second out, then the game's over. So the game uh, doesn't always go a full nine outs for for both teams. Um, the uh, lingo is such that uh, a, we we have a zinger, which is like a strikeout. Uh, dinger is obviously a home run. A pinger is like a base hit. There's only one base in Fury Baseball. I really didn't mean for this to be a Fury Baseball demo. <laughs> it's, supposed be, it's supposed to be more like a like a display than a demo. I, I don't want to go get into too depth too in depth of an explanation here. Hopefully, most of the people watching this are pretty familiar with the way uh, Fury Hardball works. Um, we'll do a demo later. Yeah, we'll do a demo. In fact, I think you know we've got the the uh, the Christmas game. The Snowball had a had a Fury Hardball game, so it's not like you know it's never been explained before. Uh, but uh, so so to kind of intensify the action, uh, zingers are two outs. Dingers are two runs. A, a ringer will score uh, two runs uh, from the bonus base. When you get a base hit, you can try to go for the safe base, which is like an uncontested. If, if you get a pinger, it's uncontested. You can just take it. Or you can try to make the dash for the bonus base and risk a potential out, uh, in which case, uh, if you make it safely, then you that you score from there, it's two runs. All right, so that, that enough enough explanation. Let's just show you how the game works. So I'm going to roll all these together here. Bourget pitching. Oh, do I have all my... Yeah, I got my current batter is Buchek. And these are my other... I'll put these other down here just so I have access to them. All right, so I'm going to roll it right here. And I'm going to read the blue die is going to be what the uh, pitcher throws. The white die is going to be the batter's swings. And, and, and then I've got my Fury die right here. i got my D10. Everything is all in one roll. So here we go. So Bourget is throwing junk and Buchek swinging big. So it's a big swing for, against junk on four. And that's the batter card because batter is number four. And we look at what is it's a pinger or a dinger. He didn't get, the, obviously he didn't get the, the uh, triangle, so it's going to be a pinger. And now we're going to see, where's my, uh, oh, i got to get my card for the uh, for the automated base running. We're going to see if he's going to try for the bonus base. And this is all explained in the rules, but I'll put the I'll put this here. So we're going we're gonna to roll a die here. And it's a six. So he's pegged, he did try to take the bonus base, but he was thrown out by Khatib. So that will be one out. All right, so Estupion, he should not, he should have just taken the safe base. Every run counts, especially with these guys. These guys are like pretty low scoring. By the way, the average score for a, a Fury Hardball game is three to one, f- from our research. But you do get those occasional, you know, eight to seven games. All right, three six. So Bourget is throwing stuff. Estupion is not swinging. So we have four is going to be. And, and, and uh, when there's no swing, then you obviously you're not going to look at the batter's card. You're going to go to uh, result number five, which represents one through five on no swings. It's going to be a zinger. So it's going to be two. Two outs, Estupian zings. Here's Casaza. And we got j- another junk pitch. Of course, Bourget specializes in junk, if you look at his card. And he's throwing junk again. And it uh, looks like Casaza is not going to swing, so that's probably going to be a ringer. I, I got a five here, so yeah, it's going to be a ringer. So Casaza is going to take the bonus base. And uh, here's Siegel. We have still three outs. And here we go. More junk from Bourget, and again, no swing from Siegel. So that's going to drive in. Uh, there's only one base in Fury Hardball, so he comes in and scores two. Boy, team has two. And now we have Siegel on the bonus base, and Buchek is batting again. And here we go. Bourget needs to throw some heat or something here. Uh, but no, he's going for junk again, and it looks like, again, no swing for for uh, Buchek, so that's going to walk in another run. Two more in. So that's four now. So we got Buchek on the bonus base and the Stupian's batting. It's good to get to turn into a route if Bourget doesn't start throwing some heat or something. So now he does. He's going to throw heat. Uh, and Estupian has a big swing. Uh-oh. That is going to be big swing. It's going to go to the pitcher's card. Oh, wait, wait, he's going to be the batter's card. And that's going to be a pinger or an out. It would be an out if it was a triangle, but it's not. So that's going to drive in two more runs. And we're going to see if Estupion 
chooses to go for the bonus base. And it's a one. So he does not try for the bonus base. Oh, well, yes, he does. He goes for the bonus base and he's safe. So now he's on the bonus base. So we get another couple of runs possible. Six runs in now. Casaza is batting. And uh, we have to see if uh, Bourget is going to look, take the look. So now we're again going to the automated base stealing and base running chart. And four. So the runner opts not to steal, but Bourget is going to pitch with a look to the next batter, which is advantageous to the batter. So here we go. Casaza. So looks like Bourget is going to throw stuff. No swing for Casaza. And that will probably be a zinger. It is. So that'll take two outs. Oh, you know what? I've got... The... You said you're adding runs on the outside. I know, yeah. I just noticed that. Right. So we should have four runs here. And uh, I'm not used to using this. I'm used to using a scoreboard. So that would be four. That would be six outs now, if I'm, if I'm correct. Um, so four runs in. Uh, we still have a Stupion on the bonus base. Did we have we got six or four? I say it's six runs. Six runs. Only two outs. Six runs only. Oh, thank you. Th I pre appreciate that. All right, only two outs. Six runs in. All right, very good. Thank you for correcting that. Uh, all right. So Siegel's batting. The Stupion's still on the bonus base. We're going to roll again to see if Borges looking or not. We have to do this each time. We have a base runner. Five. Uh, so the runner opts not to steal. Slinger, again, is pitching with a look. So they're, they're really get, getting the best of Bourget today. So pitching with a look. Here's Siegel. I'm sorry, he's four outs. See, that's, that's what I thought. Because yeah. of that last zing. All right, so, uh, so Bourget's throwing junk. And uh, Siegel is big and throwing, making a big swing. That's probably, usually that's a zinger. But in this case, we got the die roll of one, so it's going to go to it's going to be on the on the slinger card. Uh, still, it's going to be an out, a pinger on a stuff pitch, but he's not throwing stuff; he is throwing junk. So he gets an out, five outs now, and now Buchek is here. I guess we should be seeing if he's going to try. To, no, yeah, we, we should be seeing if he's trying to steal because he does have the default safe base running. So we got to first let's see if he's going to try to steal here. Uh. And the runner steals home. All right. So so Estupion just, just stole home. That makes it eight runs in. We take him off. Now, if he had if he had stayed on and 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 Buchek had gotten it out, then he would have had to forfeit his base because it would have been his turn to bat again. So it was, it was always kind of smart to try to at least try to sneak that steal in if you can. All right. So that gives them eight. And now here's Buchek. This is the long inning for L.A. Borges not getting very many outs. All right. So he's going to throw junk again. Big swing for uh, Buchek on junk, and we're going to get our first furious action. So we rolled a zero, so that means it's a ringer. It kind of switches things. So Buchek takes the bonus base. Estupion is on the uh, on on deck. I guess they got to take this off here. And now we're going to roll for furious action. First of all, though, we're going to see if Buchek's going to try to steal home. Two. Let's see here. Uh, rolling the okay. We're gonna roll on his on his rating to see if he makes the if he if he uh, uh, steals home. So he's gonna probably do it if, unless I roll a one. Oh, I don't need. I can roll. I can roll the fury die. If I roll a triangle, he's gonna be out. So he made it safely. So that's two more in. That makes it ten. All right. Now we go to the furious action chart, and we'll we won't roll the dice to determine pitch unless we have to. Eight. Uh, Slinger throws a winger. Oh, we could have punches. We'll, we'll opt not to throw punches, but still it's going to score two more runs. Bourget does not have the stuff tonight. So Estupion scores two. That makes it 12. See, I told you, you know, typical score is like three to one. These guys have 12 runs in now. It's a, it's a route. All right, here's Casaza. Back to the regular chart. And uh, so, again, let's see, Borges is going to throw heat this time. No swing from Casaza, so that'll be a zinger on six. So that'll make two more outs. Seven outs now, finally getting some outs. And that brings up Siegel. 
and it's uh, heat and a reaching swing on heat for Seagull. We've got a six reaching swing on heat. It'll be a zinger, and that'll do it. So the inning is finally over, but 12 runs in for uh, the uh, L.A. We won't call them the Dodgers, but they do kind of look like the Dodgers. All right, so now we're going to go to the other side here. Let's reset the uh, outs to zero, and uh, these guys have got to get 13 runs to win. That's going to be a tall order, but, you know, it could happen. So Bargava, let's move all these tokens over to here. Lopez will lead off. And it's going to, he's, so Bargava's going to throw junk, and it looks like it's going to be no swing. So they're going to start out with, uh, let's, we'll check it, six. Yeah, it's a ringer. So Lopez gets the bonus base. Yeah, that's a good start. Here's Budnick. So Bargava's throwing heat. No swing on Budnick. Oh, that's going to be a zinger. Two outs. Xander who is uh, actually one of their pitchers. It's not a bad pitcher. Uh, so Bargava's throwing junk, and it looks like no swing for Xander, so that will likely be nine. It will be a ringer. So that will score. Uh, I, I should have had him try I should have had him try to steal because he does have the safe default rating. Um, but he's in now. So uh, that will, let's see, we'll put... Xander on the bonus base. Morabito is now batting. And two are in. No, it's not tied. It's 12 to 2. We need maybe to have a little indicator on there for, you know, like 10, a, 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 a second digit, 10, you know, for the 10 runs, adding 10. All right, so here's Morabito. All right, that's going to be a heat pitch, big swing. Look out. Uh, we're going to look at the batter card. And uh, let's see. I guess I should, first of all, I should have first of all rolled to see if he's going to... No, he, he doesn't have the default. There's no luck involved here. He's a slow runner. Uh, all right, so uh, a big swing, a heat, big swing against heat, and we have a nine. That will be the batter card. It's a zinger or a ping. Oh, it's a dinger on a heat pitch. So we we didn't get the we didn't get the circle we got the square so he's going to hit a dinger since he did throw heat so that will bring in that's actually a a, a humdinger because he gets the two runs for the for the dinger and two runs on the bonus base so that actually gives them four more runs so now it's twelve to six and LA's getting a little nervous here all right so nobody on base now there's only two outs here's Lopez. We've got junk pitch and uh, no swing. So that will probably be another another ringer. Yes, it is. Junk pitch, no swing. So it looks like Lopez is on with a walk. Oh, this is starting to get interesting. Let's see if he steals because he's got the safe default rating. Where's my card? A five. Uh, batter opts to take the safe base. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm looking at the... Uh, the wrong side of the card. Runner opts not to steal. Slinger's going to pitch with a look the next at bat. So Bargava's going to pitch with a look to Budnick. Well, I, you know, San Francisco's got him where they want him now. All right, so it's going to be... Oops, i got to roll this one too. So it's going to be uh, heat pitch. Budnick's going to do a reaching swing. Three. So that'll be to the fielder. Could be a stinger. No, it's not. It would have been a stinger on a circle symbol, but it's a triangle symbol. So, so it's just an out. They could have used the second out. But that brings up Xander. And now we're going to see if uh, Lopez is going to try to steal again. Five. No, but he's going to stick with the look. So Bargava's pitching with a look to Xander. He's throwing heat. Xander's taking a big swing. Oh, my gosh. Look out. It's going to be uh, batter four. So the bat, oh, but he, well, okay. No, he doesn't have the square. It's an out, deep out, almost to the uh, metal fence in the out. But an out nonetheless. All right, so here's Morbido. Again, we got to check and see if Lopez is going to try to make it in. 
six. I, he's, oh, he did try to make it in. He got pegged. So he's out. Now there's five outs. Morbido still at bat. Take the look away. Uh, all right, it's going to be junk. Morbido's taking a big swing at junk. Oh, not good. Zinger. Going for the fence. Now there's seven outs. That leaves it up to Lopez. It's uh, 12 to 6. High scoring game. Here we go. Here's Lopez. Bargava. With the stretch and the pitch. He's throwing stuff. Lopez is taking a big swing at stuff. It's 3. Oh, it's going to go to uh, the fielder. That's going to be an out. Could be a stinger. It is a stinger. That's the end of the game. That's the ninth out. So there's our final. L.A. A little, get a little bit nervous there for, for a minute. There's When they picked up six runs with only two outs. Uh, but as it turned out, the uh, San Francisco club was not able to generate much more action. So it's going to be a 12-6 to final for uh, Los Angeles. So that's how a Fury Hardball works with the play mat. Uh, again, I used to just scorn it in pencil and papers. I, I, I am a little bit still getting used to using the, the markers and stuff. But you kind of get an idea how it works. And uh, it, typically a game goes faster than that. I mean, when you have a high-scoring game and lots of runs, I mean, how long did that take? I didn't time it. I'm going to guess maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, we're at 35 for the broadcast. Yeah, I'm gonna. I've, that felt like it took about 15 minutes. Typically, it takes about. Yeah, we time. I think Sam and I played like like 10 games, and we averaged I think it was eight minutes a game. So it doesn't typically take that long. You run a bunch of zingers in a row, and bam, you know, the innings over. But anyway, that gives you a, that that shows you that you can have a high scoring slugfest in Fury Hardball. So there you go. Uh, Can we talk about release dates. Release dates. Uh, yes. So this goes in everybody's swag bag. Uh, the game, the teams, the mat. Um, and the, the Fury die, there's an ex you get a second Fury die to use with your Fury, Fury football game or any future Fury games we might uh, offer down the road. Um, then after the after the uh, NotCon, we will release this game uh, to the general public. It'll be made, uh, I think, August 10th probably. We'll put it up and it'll be available uh, along with the mats and all the other other goodies. Um, so that's the scoop on Fury Hardball. Uh, I think I basically I think that's basically it. That's that's pretty much all we have um, for tonight. Shirts, shirts, uh, shirts campaign. Just yeah, you know we've got the all that's going to be covered. We got we got a newsletter coming out on Monday. Uh, it's not a it's not a ping. It's a full newsletter. We got some really cool feature articles, by the way. I think you'll really enjoy. Um, I won't spill the beans now, but but do check your email box for the uh, summer 2020 newsletter. It's got some really cool stuff in it, and there'll be complete information about how to get your shirt. There'll be a link for that, uh, also uh, links to, for, for the NotCon uh, page. If you haven't, uh, so so if you want to play on Saturday, um, all you got to do is just join the uh, Play NotCon Facebook group. We created a special group for you. You just got to join it, and then that's where we're gonna, that's where we're going to post all the information about you know who's going to have which assigned teams, uh, you know, who's playing who, or, well, I, actually, that'll all be cooperative on uh, the Saturday event, but the Sunday event, we'll also, we'll also use it for the Sunday event uh, uh, announcements as well. So that's going to be the clearinghouse for information. If you're not a member of that group yet, uh, you can find it on Facebook, but we'll provide a link in the newsletter on Monday where you just click it and you're there, and then you can join. So all that's coming up Monday. Um, we're still over, you know, still over a month away from this, so uh, we're not in any rush to to crank out a bunch of inf information. Probably a couple weeks before, we'll start doing the matchups. Uh, everybody will have an assigned team for the uh, History Maker Baseball Time Machine Tournament. Um, oh, by the way, it, originally we were going to include a printed set of the Time Machine Tournament teams, the, the uh, 500 teams. Uh, and it, so if, if you prefer that over the Fury playmat, uh, that's perfectly fine. Just let us know. Otherwise, we'll assume you're good with the playmat, and we're going to ship that. But uh, we will assign everybody a team, uh, uh, one of the fav one of the 500 teams uh, in the collection. There are 36 of them, and then you'll be able to play whichever team you want against that team. So you play your favorite team. That's what I call the favorite 500 team. You pick your favorite 500 and play it against an assigned team. Then we'll do a cumulative standings type deal, and uh, the team the teams in each league with the best winning percentage will then face each other for the uh, championship game, which will stream live on Saturday night. Bob and uh, Al are asking about a surprise. 
There is a surprise. Yes, there is a surprise. In the swag bag? In the really? swag bag, yes. Well, you know what it is. I know what it is, yeah. I wasn't sure what surprise oh. they were talking about. I thought maybe you said you were going to... No, we have a surprise that we'll include in the swag bag. And it'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> we can't reveal everything. So, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, again, all the information is on the website uh, right now. Uh, or you can just wait till Monday, get the newsletter, and click the links and make it really easy on yourself. So, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, apologize for the you know earlier faux pas, but uh, I've come to <laughs> I've come to almost expect it sadly from myself uh, during these broadcasts. But uh, thanks for bearing with me on that. Hope you have a great weekend, and we will see you again uh, Tuesday night. We'll see you Monday for the newsletter. See you Tuesday night for Game Gab, and then next Thursday night for our uh, college football. No, no, it's not the college football All Star Game. It's uh, well, I won't I won't see what it is. It's gonna be it's another surprise, a surprise stream on. Uh, on uh, Thursday. Super cool, though. So we'll talk to you next week. Have a great weekend. Thanks for being part of the Play Games community. We appreciate you very, very much.